We come to question 15. Question 15 says, in the Bohr model of hydrogen, discrete radii and energy states result when what property of the electron is proportional to Planck's constant? So, uh, as I mentioned before, by 1913, Bohr proposed his model of the hydrogen atom. So, what did he do? How did he propose that the energy levels of the uh, electrons are quantized or come in certain discrete levels? Did he say the mass of the electron comes in certain discrete levels? Does the momentum come in certain discrete? Does the angular momentum, does the energy, or does the velocity? Well, if you think about it, uh, each of this is partially true. It is true that the momentum of the electron is, comes in certain discrete levels. It's true that angular momentum, it's of course true that energy and velocity, they all come in certain discrete levels. But what led to the others, right? What led to the discreteness of the other quantities? It was the angular momentum. Bohr proposed that the angular momentum of the electron comes in certain discrete multiples of uh, Planck's constant. Namely, here's what he proposed. The angular momentum is some multiple of h over 2 pi. Uh, the Planck's constant is h divided by 2 pi. A lot of times this is called h bar. We write it this way. Okay. So this was his proposal. Well, angular momentum of an orbiting electron can be written as mbr, nh over 2 pi. From this, we can start calculating what are the allowed discrete orbits of the electron. So notice, actually, this leads to the same argument that was made later in the 1920s by Louis de Broglie, right? I mentioned that in question number one when I was saying, what's the root reason why the electron orbits are quantized, and we said that it's because they are treated as a wave, and their wavelength has to be integer multiples of the circumference. Think about it, when the angular momentum is integer multiple of Planck's constant over 2 pi, then what ends up happening? Well, <coughs> uh, if you multiply this 2 pi over here, what do you get? If we, if we rearrange it, we get 2 pi and then that multiplies by r is equal to n and then h over mv, h over mv. So we could take this mv and put it down there, and what do we get? h over mv is h over p. h over p. And um, uh, h over p is what? It's the wavelength of the wave of the electron as proposed by de Broglie, right? And lambda. So the circumference of the electron orbit is integer multiples of the wavelength. We get the quantized energy states, okay? And that also is equivalent to saying their angular momentum is integer multiples of Planck's constant over 2 pi, which is h bar, okay? So it's the angular momentum quantization that led to the energy quantization and the velocity, momentum. From there, we can also conclude, well, since mass and energy are also equivalent according to relativity, well, if energy is quantized, therefore, mass is also quantized. So all of them are quantized, and it begins with the quantization of angular momentum, okay? So now you can see different ways of looking at the atomic orbit and how different points of view explain it. And they all help us to understand the complete picture of the atom. Okay? Thank you.